Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Thursday, March 31st, 2011, and I'm Darko. Welcome to part three of this news bulletin, everyone. Um, I just posted a poll here, you might want to check it out. This is my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. And the poll is, when do you believe the U.S. dollar will cease to be the world reserve currency? Uh, the options up there are within the next 12 months, within the next two years, eventually, but not sure when. And it also will never happen. So you can go in there and uh, vote on that. Uh, you can subscribe via FeedBurner or Facebook all the way at the bottom or follow me on eBlogger to the right. And we're going to keep moving here. It says, defecting Libyan foreign minister and ex-spy chief has terror-tainted history. And it uh, goes on here and it says, Musa Kusa, the Libyan foreign minister who flew to Britain Wednesday and said he was defecting from the Tripoli regime is described as a, quote, master of international terrorism and the man responsible for exporting Muammar Gaddafi's revolution is said uh, he was Libya's ambassador to London in 1980, but in June of that year, the government expelled him after he publicly approved the sentence of Libyan People's Revolutionary Court to kill two unidentified Libyan exiles in Britain. At the time, the regime was engaged in a campaign against exiled opponents, at least two of whom have been murdered in London alone. Coincidentally, news of reportedly defecting Kusa's arrival in Britain came on the same day that the British government said it was expelling five Libyan diplomats loyal to Gaddafi on the grounds they could pose a threat to national security. And the most recent update is Britain refused on Thursday to offer Libyan Foreign Minister Musa Kasa immunity from prosecution after his apparent defection. And next up, we have Libyan rebel leader spent much of past 20 years in suburban Virginia. The new leader of Libya's opposition military spent the past two decades in sur suburban Virginia, but felt compelled even in his late 60s to return to the battlefield in his homeland, according to the people who know him. It says Khalifa Hifter was once a top military officer for Libyan leader Gaddafi, but after a disastrous military adventure in Chad in the late 80s, said Hifter switched to the anti-Gaddafi opposition, and in the early 90s he moved to suburban Virginia where he established a life but maintained ties to anti-Gaddafi groups. And moving on here, Libya dilemma over defectors electrifying Lockerbie information. David Cameron was under pressure last night to ensure that the Libyan defector, who arrived in Britain earlier this week, cooperates with authorities investigating the Locker Lockerbie bombing, the murder of PC Yvonne Fletcher, and potential war crimes. Then we have... Um, from 2009, Lockerbie bomber set free for oil. The British government declared it was in the overwhelmingly interest, or it was in the overwhelming interest, sorry, of the United Kingdom to make uh, Ali Mohammed Al Marghrai, the Lockerbie bomber, eligible for return to Libya. Uh, leaked ministry, ministerial letters reveal. And it says the government made a decision after discussions between Libya and BP over a multi-million pound oil exploration deal had hit difficulties. It says these were resolved soon afterwards. Then we have Lockerbie Probe looms for minister. And it says here that... Uh, his arrival, uh, Kusa's arrival, was welcomed by relatives of those killed in the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 over the Scottish town of Lockerbie in December uh, 1988, which killed 270 people in which Kusa had been suspected of involvement. Libyan agent uh, Mohammed Magrai was convicted of the bombing in 2001 and sent to a Scottish jail, although he was released on compassionate grounds in August 2009 because he was suffering from terminal cancer. And I just wanted to check this article. If anyone knows the most recent update on this individual, whether he is alive or deceased, I just remember this little tidbit of information, and um, I just thought I'd throw it out there. So if this is incorrect and he is dead, please someone uh, put it in the comment board. But this is what the article that came up first when I looked at it. Dying Lockerbie bomber could survive for 10 years or more. The Lockerbie bomber could survive for 10 years or longer, according to a cancer specialist who last year said he would be dead within three months of his release. So... And I guess the gist of the story there is is the U.S. and the U.K. have, you know, are knee deep in Libyan politics. They, you know, basically propped up that re dictatorship, that regime that's that's in there, and the same one they're trying to take out. And they're doing deals, dirty deals for oil. I mean, they're basically trying to report on it without having to, uh, uh, you know, claim responsibility. So that's what that's pretty much what that is. It says here, Britain expels five Libyan diplomats over security concerns. Foreign Security uh, Secretary William Hague announced Wednesday that British has expelled five Libyan diplomats due to security concerns. 
And um, we're going to move on here to Libya. Here's the worst case scenario in Libya, and it's perfectly plausible. They said it's worth a read. It says, number one, we arm the rebels. Number two, find this uh, both not enough, and Qaddafi's forces overrun, confiscate, and use arms against rebels and coalition air forces. And it says here, uh, number three, we try to air assault against Qaddafi's ground forces. It says here, find this insufficient and leads to excessive collateral damage. Number five, we try to convince coalition to place boots on the ground. Number six, notably France and other members reject land invasion. Uh, number seven, NATO can't gain consensus to modify resolution 1973. And number eight, uh, United States bites the bullet, air assaults known uh, Qaddafi military bases and lands troops in Libya. Uh, next up is Assad vows to defeat foreign plot. Syrian President Assad says his government is ready to continue on the path of reforms and vows to defeat a foreign plot against his country. He says his enemies have taken advantage of his people's uh, legitimate demands in order to create division and undermine Syria's stability, Reuters reported. And uh, goes on there. Then we have Bahrain enlisting Pakistani forces. Bahrain is reportedly recruiting former Pakistani troopers and anti-riot experts to aid in its crackdown on anti-government protesters and of course they have the Saudis uh, troops over there too and um, the backing of the Saudis actually have a pact now to protect each other it says here Egypt pushes elections back Egyptian military interim government Supreme Council of the Armed Forces announced on Wednesday that they will push official elections from August to September and November so there we go we Pretty much saw this coming, right? Israel deploys, quote, Iron Dome anti-rocket system. Israel on Sunday stationed the first batteries of its, quote, Iron Dome uh, short-range missile defense system in the south of the country, but stressed the initial deployment was experimental. Then Israel, considering annexing West Bank settlements, such a move would deal a uh, great grave blow to prospects for negotiating a peace deal between the two sides. Then we have Israel passes citizenship loyalty bill. Israeli lawmakers have approved a law that will allow the revocation of citizenship of anyone convicted of threatening Tel Aviv security. The Israeli par parliament passed the law on Monday enabling Isra uh, Israel's Supreme Court to strip anyone convicted of espionage, treason, or aiding the enemy during the war of their citizenship, Haaretz reported. The so-called citizenship loyalty law also authorizes the court to revoke the status of any permanent resident convicted of assisting what Tel Aviv deems as terrorist or organization quote anyone who betrays the state and carries out acts of terror must know citizenship and loyalty go together there is no citizenship without loyalty so there you go and army mubarak didn't flee to saudi arabia under house arrest with family it says the military rulers on monday announced that egypt's first parliamentary election would be held in september after which the year-long state of emergency would be lifted and then we have Facebook says no revolution for the Palestinians. This is actually an AP article, but I couldn't find it. It says here a Facebook uh, page calling on Palestinians to take up arms against Israel has been removed from the social networking site after a high-profile Israeli appeal entitled Third Palestinian, uh, what is this? I can't really read that, but uh, Intifada. The page had more than 350,000 fans before it was taken down. Facebook didn't comment on the removal on Tuesday. And uh, said Israeli cabinet minister said in a letter, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, that the page included uh, calls to kill Jews and for liberating Jerusalem through violence. Zuckerberg, right. Israeli, uh, Israeli or Israel admits kidnapping Palestinian. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has admitted that Tel Aviv is responsible for kidnapping Palestinian engineer. Uh, Abu Sisi in the Ukraine. He is being held in detention in Israel. It is an illegal arrest. Natiano was quoted as saying by Reuters on, oh, he's saying it was a legal arrest, okay? And it says, UN chief, Israel must end occupation. And then we have Iran tops global science growth. A report released by UK's Royal Society says Iran is the fastest growing country in terms of numbers of scientific publications in the world. And Iran just had a woman that was almost 100 years old if not older than 100 that was a physicist and she was um she was an iranian armenian and uh, she emigrated to iran and got scholarships and uh, yeah she was one of the first female physicists so everyone talks about oppression 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 but uh you know I, i'm not saying it's the greatest uh regime to be under i wish they were a little more free but uh people need to stop worrying about other people other country countries and start worrying about their own and themselves 
Iran sends 50,000 uh, potassium iodide compound tablets to Japan to help the disaster racked country with its battle against a growing nuclear radiation crisis. And it says the Iran's Red Crescent Society plans to send a shipment of 50,000 potassium iodide pills to Japan upon a request from Tokyo. Farce news agency uh, quoted IRCS official Fardin Baluchi as saying that we have Iran plans to promote ties with EU regional states. Iranian Foreign Minister uh, Akbar Salihi uh, announced Wednesday the Islamic Republic is planning to promote relations with regional and Islamic countries as well as the European Union member states in a new Iranian calendar year starting on March 21st. All right, Afghan war leaves 103 NATO soldiers dead in three months. And then we have Adarara, uh, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but Awatara forces seize Ivory capital. So latest reports indicate that forces loyal to Ivory Coast's internationally recognized puppet, Alassane Adarara, have taken control of the capital. So, and they always have to throw that in there, internationally recognized. Why? Because the sovereign nation of the Arikos or whatever it is, uh, still wants Kabago there. So if the, if the international community supports them, then that means the New World Order supports them. <laughs> and he's a puppet. Arikos Army Chief deserts Kabago. So the Arikos Army Chief has sought refuge at home. As a South Africa's diplomatic envoy said a South African foreign ministry spokesman dealing a crippling blow to an incumbent president who has so far resisted diplomatic and military efforts to end his decade long. So you had the uh, same thing going on here in uh, Libya. Also, you had one of the uh, top military leaders uh, basically defecting. Uh, you know, he's not really loyal to Gaddafi. He, I don't think he ever really was. And uh, he's probably working against him the entire time. And, uh, you know, I, don't, I have no, no clue about this person, who he is, but... Uh, you know, there's a there's a possibility that he could have been, you know, basically sitting there working against uh, Gabago uh, the whole time. But either way, he's defecting. Maybe he's just scared that he's going to end up in a military prison uh, once the UN and the global government takes over. Greek protesters clash with police. Greek demonstrators protesting government policies towards the medical community in the capital of Athens have clashed with riot police that used tear gas to disperse them, then uh, stop police spying on protesters at the cuts protests. Ordinary people were watched by undercover officers glamorizing Mark Kennedy uh, trivializes a serious issue. So yeah, you always have cops uh, dressed as in black, usually as anarchists, uh, damaging private property. And someone mentioned something about, oh, well, I'm from the UK and, and they're anarchists. They're really anarchists. Well, my answer to that person, I'm not like bashing you or anything. Uh, I just didn't have time to comment or reply to you to your comment was that if they are damaging property, um, private property, uh, at a protest, then I don't really see them as anarchists. If they are, they're very immature, and that's a very ineffective way to, to go about uh, lessening government. The other thing is, is why the, in the hell would anarchists, who are all about no government, be at a protest that was... Uh, protesting against a uh, smaller government budget cuts that makes no sense at all so I just wanted to just put that out there and uh, so we have this London set to limit right to protest they actually want to ban pro protesting altogether in that in that uh, country Pi uh, pirate prison opened in Somalia lands capital with United Nations funding so there you go folks the big bad Somali pirates now uh, uh, rate an entire um, how do they call it, a Chinese-Russian naval task force, strike force, uh, just for Somali pirates. We have every um, or most uh, major countries in that area, in the Gulf of Aden, for little, poor, uh, below-poverty um, people who don't even have a government, no country, uh, have been conquered a long time ago by the Brit British Empire and the Germans, and they couldn't beat them, so they split them apart. And now these are the people that uh, are left, these people that were conquered a long time ago, who had their own shipping lanes taken from them. Uh, now they're going to have a prison for them, specially funded by the United Nations. So, Ken Clark's prison privatization sparked a uh, strike threat. The government is on a collision course with the prison officers after announcing plans to privatize jails, sparking threats of industrial action. Uh, Google makes app that would identify people's faces. Google is working on a mobile application that would allow users to snap pictures of people's faces in order to access their personal information, a director for the project said. And then key logging, a security researcher says he discovered a key logging software installed on two brand new Samsung that could be used to monitor all activities 
on the computer remotely. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.